welcome back to Breaking Night with BL. I'm BL. And I can't begin to tell you how excited I am. It's been a rough couple of weeks, but I finally made the move. I got myself a bigger studio, more space, more room, able to work on more things and show a lot more stuff. I literally have my original Treat Street table. For anybody that knows Treat Street, where we made all of our art, everybody that came to my house, in some shape or form, everybody that wrote on canvases wrote on this table. So already the super treat is I got the Treat Street table. Take a look. Here's the original Treat Street table. For those that know about this, when we had Treat Street at my house in Ridgewood, all the canvases we were doing, everybody that came by to work on stuff and hang out, all got up on this table. Definitely a collection of a lot of treat writers. Too many to mention. Just too many. But I will mention, this is Dessa catch, Dessa catch, Dessa catch over each other like 10 times. A nice fun rivalry between them two, going over each other all the time. So, rest in peace. Got the stew. Yeah, man, like I said, if you look, there's way too many here to mention. All original. One of a kind, just in itself. This whole table full of treats. That's a lot of history right there. Let me tell you something. That's definitely a piece of history right here. That's super valuable to me. It was a part of a life in my time of me working on things and doing things when not a lot of people could afford to do things like that. You need a big space in order to do these kind of things. So I'm honored and blessed. To, I shot the lock off my wallet. I invested a little bit of money. I got a bigger and better space. So I could do a lot more. Here, yeah. I got my table set up with my original computer with my music stuff in it. I got my scanners. I got sneakers I'm working on. I got all my Angelus Direct stuff right here. I got music I worked on that I'm going to be talking about. I got treats that I purchased. Look at this. Send for dumpster. Who's got one of these? Sneakers I've worked on. Just a lot of things right in hand. You want to see a treat? Yeah, let me show you a treat. You all know I was good friends with DG. DG was a brother of mine. Everything I did, DG supported. He made me this cold heat canvas. For BL from DG. Let me tell you something. DG had a heart of gold. He was a talent like you wouldn't believe. And I'm honored to have things like this in my collection. This is a personal treat for me. For those that know, Cold Heat was a music group that me and my buddy Jack had. We were making a lot of hip-hop, doing a lot of cool things. Shout out to DJ JS1. Shout out to Craig G. Everybody in our circle. A lot of good times, man. And I'll never forget any of it. Anytime I needed anything, I went to DG and he hooked me up. I'm going to be talking a lot more about DG in the next episode. Because I got a lot of drawings he's made for me, things he's done for other people, and just show a little more about the kind of person DG was to his graffiti friends. That's what was important. When DG was around people he grew up with, he was a different person. He was old school, he had like morals, and he was a true vandal that had a real talent. And that to me is a super sick treat. More than anything. 
stuff like that is not for sale. That's going to be on my wall till the day I die. And then somebody could sell it and burn it, whatever. Nobody understands the value of things that's personal to you. You want to see another treat? So one time, I'm in the city with JS1. Shout out, Germs. He was DJing, I believe, at Nokia Theater, which at the time was Best Buy Theater for opening up for these big acts. And we're hanging out. We're just chilling. We leave. We're driving home back to Queens from Manhattan. And we get to Third, I think, I believe it was Third Avenue and 57th Street. Yeah, that's right. Third Avenue, 57th Street. We're driving along, and I see in front of a fancy storefront a piece of plywood, and I see some like graffiti thing on it. And I was like, "Wait, stop the car!" So he pulls the car over, and I get out, and I walk over, and this V for canvas was screwed to the plywood. Okay, there were six screws in it here. Here and here, 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 and here. So I told Germs, I was like, yo, bring me home. I'm going home getting a screwdriver. I'm going back and getting this thing. I went back on the train from Queens, right into Manhattan. And I took it off, and this is what it said. The free art program. He made four of ten that he was putting in the street. And I have one of them. Vifa is a true graph legend. People don't even know how much that boy has done. I love and respect him like you wouldn't believe. Vifa's a sick vandal. Very underrated. But that, to me, super treat. And we're going to be talking about a lot of other stuff. I mean, I got boxes and boxes of stickers. I got original photos. Remember we used to print photos? Remember when we used to have a camera? You go to dollar, one hour photo, and you wait to get your pictures, and you get treats. We're going to be talking about a lot of that stuff. Because that's what's important. We're losing history here. Things are moving too fast. And things I've collected and done, to me, super priceless. May not mean a lot to you, means the world to me. And definitely, growing up in New York, born in the 70s and into the 80s, I was definitely honored and blessed to be a part of playing New York Street Games. How many of you remember New York Street Games? Any of you? Remember? You go out the street, people are playing Kick the Can, Ring Alivio, Stoop Ball, Punch Ball. Remember? Chinese Handball. Bounce off the floor first. Put somebody in the bread basket. Remember those games? One of my favorite games, though, was Run, Catch, and Kiss. Remember that? Man, for some reason... The beautiful girls were always fast. And the ugly girls were very slow. I don't know why, but God plays a cruel trick on you. I had to run my ass off to get a kiss from one of these pretty girls. The rest of the girls just fall to the floor. Oh, ha, ha, you got me. It's like, no, I run around you. I'm going after that one. Can you imagine what that would be like nowadays? You're on the block with some boys and girls. You're chasing some girls, and there's some boy running after you. Because he's confused. They told him in school that he likes boys. Yo, so you're not just chasing the girl, you're running from this dude. Man, it wasn't like that in the 80s. It was very legit, very real. And that was the fun times. They were like Johnny on the Pony. Man, freeze tag, catch one, catch all. You don't know about these games, man. If you weren't in the street in those days playing games, you don't know about the real New York. But being a vandal and being in the street, we had... What we call aggressive street games. You know about these? Things like hop on the turnstile. Or walk in the catwalk. You know what the catwalk is? The elevated trains from station to station, outside where the trains go, there's wood with a handrail. It's called the catwalk. And when we were kids, we used to dare each other. Ah, I dare you to walk from Seneca to Forest. I dare you. Because trust me, kids are mean, man. Peer pressure was tough back then, man. Kids would pressure you into doing things you didn't want to do. But you were either man and you did it or you didn't. It was kind of like rack and paint. People want you to go into a store and do some stuff and all of a sudden you look, you're doing something that no one else is doing. That's hip hop. That's graffiti. That's the adrenaline rush. You know what I'm saying? But little did I know that 
these street games were preparing me to be a graffiti writer. Because here I am, you know, pre-parkour stuff. We're climbing roofs, playing tag on the block, jumping over cars, hiding, running. Not realizing we're training for graffiti. I'm running, jumping over obstacles, and learning how to hide and avoid police activity. Cops come and chase me. They're not catching me. I'm way too fast for you. I got some fat chick chasing me or some boy who thinks he's going to get a kiss. Ain't happening. Different world now. But you got to accept and love every part of it. And that's what I care about. Everything in life to me is a lesson. I love it. I enjoy it. And if you're not, you're missing out on a lot of stuff. Hey, let me drop a little gem on you. Here, watch this. You may not notice, but, you know, everyday change that you get in the store, you know, you go in the store, you buy something, you get some change, usually people just get rid of their change. Did you know that pre-1965, all quarters and dimes were made with 90% silver? There's 90% silver in some of these quarters. So what I do anytime I get change or I go somewhere, I'm not telling you to go to the bank and get $100 in quarters and go home and start rifling through them. But at your leisure, without driving yourself crazy, what you want to do, anytime you get change, take a look. Look at the date. Is it a bicentennial? Could it be something of value? Because let me tell you something. From every date change, I have literally collected so much silver, I got quite a couple dollars. You know, one of these quarters... That silver from pre-1965. So anything before 1965 was made with 90% silver. Four quarters. One, two, three, four. Let's say you had four quarters that were pre-1965. These four quarters are worth about $10, $15. You just multiplied your money. So when you get some change, you look at dimes and quarters. Stop being stupid. Pay attention to what you have. Put them aside. You may be worth money. You know, there's a lot of coins out there like dimes and quarters that are worth hundreds of thousands of dollars that are still in circulation. It's probably sitting in somebody's coin box or in a register somewhere or it could be in your pocket. Pay attention to the small stuff. That's important. And talking about paying attention. You all see what's going on with our country these days, man? The people that are filing into our country. I'm seeing so many videos of people talking about how all these migrants that are coming here are going to harm us. Can you believe that? They're coming for our jobs. They're coming for our houses, our cars. They're coming for our lifestyle. These people come from nothing and they're coming to America to take what you have. So it's important that you're prepared. Remember a couple years ago, Antifa, Black Lives Matter, they were destroying neighborhoods across. They were burning cars and businesses and doing things that, to your normal person, what, what, what are they doing? Why, why are they doing this? They have a plan. It's all a plan. So a couple of my friends from New York that I was talking to, I kind of said, like, hey, man, shit's going to jump off, man. Things have been so crazy in New York. I see in the news that they beat up a cop and they let these guys go. Man, these cops nowadays in New York are soft. That would have been the 80s and 90s. Those cops would have beat the shit out of those dudes, put them in the hospital, and that's what you would have saw on the news. Officers beat the shit out of migrants. They want to go home. They don't want to be here no more. That's what the news should have said. But I'm disgusted. And I tell my friends, look, man, it's not a disclaimer, but in New York, they took all your guns away. You don't have any more guns, barely have any weapons. How are you going to protect yourself? I'm going to tell you a couple of things. Go to the hardware store. Buy some axes and hammers. You got an axe or a hammer? Trust me, no one's going to bother you. You can't get a gun? Of course you can't get a gun. This is what I want you to do. Go on eBay. I want you to search for semi-automatic paintball guns. It's like two or $300. Semi-automatic paintball guns. Paintball guns look like real guns. But let me put you onto a trick. I never played paintball. I'm a street dude, but paintball, I know some people that play it, and somebody came to me and told me something, and I was just like, wow, oof. 
life lesson. Do you know that if you go buy a semi-automatic paintball gun and you take the paintballs and you put them in the freezer, you know what happens to those paintballs? That's right, you're a graffiti writer. Use your head. They get frozen. They turn into a marble. I have friends that told me that they were hit by paintballs alone. It splattered and they got black and blues. It hurts my ribs. Can you imagine getting hit with a paintball that's a marble? You hit somebody in the head or the body? Trust me. Protect yourself. Buy yourself a paintball gun. Put them shits in the freezer. Somebody comes on your property, somebody comes to harm you or your family, you start do 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 They get hit with those, they're going to think it's a shotgun. They're running. Just a tip. I'm not telling you to go out and harm people. I am telling you, protect yourself. If you're not going to protect yourself, who's going to? I was telling my boy the other day, I said, yo, let me ask you a question. If stuff pops off, if stuff really pops off, right? What do you think the cops are going to do? If there's so much going on, you think the cop's phone is going to be ringing, they're going to call 911, the operator is going to be dispatching people to your houses. By the time anybody comes to your house, I'm sorry, you're already dead and slaughtered. Your kids are dead, they robbed your house, they're on to the next one. Be prepared. I like to be prepared. So I'm just saying, pay attention to what you're doing. Because these people are not here to be nice to us. They're not here just to vote. They're not here just to take our money. They're here to hurt us. So, you do what you have to do to protect your family. Because I said to my buddy, I says, hey, if you were a police officer, and things were going crazy, and they were sending you all these jobs, and in your own house and home, you got your wife and your kids, you think that police officer is going to be on his job chasing calls? Or do you think he's going to go home and protect his family? What do you think he's going to do? I know if I was a cop and I got a call that things are going down, I'm going to check on my wife and kids. Taking my police car, my guns, my weapons. I'm calling up the brothers. Meet me at my house. Then we meet you at your house. Trust me, the cops are not going to be able to help you. You got to be able to protect yourself. And if you don't, then you're going to have to deal with that. Like they say, it's better to be prepared than unprepared. I'm prepared. But listen, these are just life lessons, man. And you got to just really pay attention to what's going on around you. I don't really listen to the news because they're lying to you. The news is telling you things that should detract you from really what's going on. I can't stand that. I'm a critical thinker. I look into things for myself and I think for myself. And that's what means everything to me. Be your own person. Don't be a follower. Be a leader. And kind of just take an outside look at what's going on. Stop just letting this little box with some audio and video of the same person telling you what's going on with your life. Because that's not what's going on. What's going on is what you make of life. And that's about that. Be good to yourself. Take care of your family and your friends. Take care of your community. Nowadays, we don't even have communities. Things have changed so much, it's, it's insane. You know, a lot of people don't know this, and some people do. I left New York eight years ago. My family bought a house in Connecticut over 30 years ago. I've been back and forth to Connecticut. I'm one hour away from Queens. I'm not on the other side of the world. One hour from Queens. Let me tell you something. You know the difference between New York and Connecticut? One hour apart? So many differences. Number one, the people in Connecticut are polite. I've never walked anywhere. You walk down the street, people are like, good morning. Hey, how are you? They let you walk in front. They acknowledge you. They say hi. Like human beings. And I realized, wow, New York, man, we're animals. We don't even look your neighbor in the face and say hello anymore. That's disgusting. Love New York, Connecticut, man. The beaches, the places, the houses. It's just a different atmosphere because the people are nice. They make it a pleasant time. In New York, you're running into assholes. Everybody's in a rush, bumping you out of my way. What's wrong with you? It's like, wow, man. Once you get out of that rat race, you start to see a little bit more. And I realize, wow, man, this is such a big difference, man. 
I'm so glad I don't live in New York no more. Living in New York, you get into an ambulance, trust me, there's a good chance you're going to die. Because in New York, people hear sirens and shit behind them. They got their radios blasting. They're smoking a blunt. Just... What? Sirens? Fuck that shit. I'm not moving. This, this guy's not moving. I'm not moving. You're going to die in that fucking ambulance. In Connecticut, if you're in an ambulance, anybody hears anything, whoosh, people move out of the way. It's amazing how love and respect for your community and people is just so different. So different. Love New York. Connecticut has no teams. What's up with that? No basketball, no baseball, no football teams. New York has two teams, Florida, two teams. All these places have teams, multiple teams. Chicago, two teams. Connecticut has no teams. So you know what I'm stuck seeing? Jerk-offs with a Yankee hat or a Boston Red Sox hat. Very few have Mets hats. Very few. And no matter what you do, somebody's always got to comment, you know, like, oh, man, the Mets, oh, they lost just today. I don't even really pay attention like that. But it is funny, though. I do abuse these people. When I see somebody with a Yankee hat in Connecticut, I'm always like, yo, what's up, man? Yo, where, where are you from in the Bronx? Oh, you're not from the Bronx? Why you like the Yankees? Clown. Very different here. Very, very different. Different between New York and Connecticut. If you're driving around New York and you got a hat on, you're driving, you're a thug. They're going to pull you over. You got to be careful. When I drive, I take my hat off. I leave it next to me. Especially in New York. In Connecticut, you're wearing a hat, you're either a lawyer or you're going to college. Police are like, hey, what's up, man? Stereotyping, judging. Trust me, we all live it. You got to just pay attention to your surroundings. And the biggest thing which I learned is being in Connecticut, people are so nice. You're driving down the highway, they get out of your way, they let you in the lane. If I'm coming down the block and somebody's coming out of a driveway, they'll wait and for you to go. So polite. In New York, when I go to visit, the second I'm crossing the Whitestone or the Throgs Neck Bridge, I'm dealing with fuckery. Jerk all fucking drivers, cutting me off, speeding around me, flying in a rush to go nowhere. And here I am just like, wow. I'm doing the same speed, 60, 70 miles an hour. I was in Connecticut. I come here, people are doing 90 and 100 to get around you. That's cool. But what I learned is that now that I have out-of-state plates, I get these people trying to pull up and press me. You know, they pull up like, yo, fuck, get out of the way, jerk off. And I'm literally just like, wow, shit has changed. I remember when we were kids in New York, playing on the street, playing football, you know, New York street games and we didn't have GPS none of that back then. Somebody would pull up and be like, hey guys, uh, we're a little lost. Um, how do I get to Myrtle Avenue and Fresh Pond? And we were deviant little kids, man. We would straight up lie to them. Like, oh man, Myrtle and Fresh Pond? Oh, you're way off. What you gotta do is you go back to Queens Boulevard, you go all the way down Queens Boulevard a couple of miles till you get to Union Turnpike. Then when you make a left, you're gonna get on there and that's gonna bring you over there. So you wanna go that way. That's how bad we were as kids. And I feel like now I'm getting punished for that shit. Because I literally have to talk Ebonics to these people. I got to roll my window down and start screaming at them like, yo, jerk off. Meet me off Northern Boulevard by the gas station. Me and you, one on one. You fucking clown. And then all of a sudden they realize, oh man, this guy's not from Connecticut. He's a New Yorker. And trust me, I live it. And I say to myself, what's wrong with these people, man? I feel so bad for some of y'all, man. New York's are like a hamster wheel that you're never going to get off of. Meanwhile, I'm on beaches and on boats and people's houses and parties. and Man, I don't even argue with anybody here. The biggest argument we have in Connecticut is who's paying the bill. Everybody's nice. Drinks, shots, food, get him an appetizer. I got his meal. Hey, what's up, man? I haven't seen you. See your wife or your, your family out. Different world, man. I wish we can go back to the 80s and the 90s the way it used to be. Neighborhoods had respect and loyalty, and people treated you as such. I'm not with this new world, man. 
Things have changed. But the good news is BL's here. We're back in full motion. I got all my stuff here to show you. Monster treats, boxes of stickers, relics galore. Hey, you want to see a sick relic? This is abuse right here. This is pure abuse. I bought this thing. And by chance, it's called the Yankee Slayer. Okay? This is the Yankee Slayer. From... 1862, during the Civil War. This is called a Martingale. And I'm going to show you something. This thing is supposed to be pure silver. And it's called the Yankee Slayer. Because it's made by the 5th Cavalry, Texas Rangers. And it says right on there, Yankee Slayer. If you look at this, it's a heart. This is a Martingale that used to go on like a horse. They wore as a plate. Okay? But if you look at the back of this... You don't see nothing. It just looks like a horse stepped on it and it just looks all messed up. But the truth of the matter is, there's hidden art and messages on this stuff. This is a heavy piece of pure silver. This isn't some light piece of metal. So here's pictures of what the Yankee Slayer looks like from the front and the back. And here's a video of what we see just a little bit of on the back of this. Oh, it's, it's blown. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look at that portraits. It's diffraction. Back off. Oh, skulls. Back off. Back off. Way back off. You know, go back off. It's a head right here. Look, look, look. Look at the heart. See the head coming out with the nose? Yeah. See the head? It's all head. Yeah. See the nose? Oh, my God. Let me see this. Almost instantly as I wiggle it around. No. Yeah, almost instant. Maybe change your direct your uh, I'm angles, just, Martin. I'm moving it so that he will. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, gotcha. He just smells pretty damn nice, man. You catching it yet, Marvin? You want to stand where I am? So you can... Very bright, reflective. I can see the reflection on your face. Like a room oh, yeah. Yep. It's pretty. That's it. Okay. Definitely there. Okay. It's tremendous artwork. Oh. Stuff's got crystal quartz. I'm gonna yeah. gotta got figure this shit out. Take them upstairs. I sure do. Look at this side. And once again, the heart in the heart. heart. In the heart. So hmm. interesting. Now, I'm wondering, hmm. man, I would love to have like a micrometer right now and measure the thickness variation. I am thinking that this might have a slight curvature, not perceptible by the eye, but by mm -hmm. touch. You the know, metal you mean? It's the good. metal itself. That's what I was saying before. It's like, it doesn't look like it's flat. Mm. No, it doesn't. And I'm thinking the heart and the heart may be part of that phenomena. Yeah, that's what I was thinking as well. But it's diffracting regardless. Yeah. Super sweet. That's pretty cool. Uh, that's awesome, man. Okay. Now I'm blind. Yeah. It... Is that crazy or what? That guy is Dr. Laser. He has a hieroglyphic studio in New York City, and he is a master on diffracting art, it's called. Diffracting art is something that's on something made on purpose. It's not a mistake. If I take a beam and I shoot it off this table, it's going to go the way it's supposed to go. But if there's something diffracting it, it's going to go this way. It's going to shine this way. It's going to shine back at me. It's going to go that way. That means there's images on there or there's something that's just not normal. And you just heard Doc Laser saying, this is very rare. There's a heart in a heart on the back of this. There's skulls on the side of this toward the top and images. And we've really even yet to really look at this thing. But to me, the abuse of the whole thing is... It's called the Yankee Slayer. The Yankee Slayer. I'm a Med fan. 
Guess who's going to be wearing Mets shirts with the Yankee Slayer emblem right here? Take a guess. This guy. I have bags of relics I'm going to be showing you and teaching you about stuff. I look at art like graffiti and canvases of what people are doing, and I'm just like, wow, man. These people in the 1700s were making amazing shit. People act like, you know, you write your name in graffiti on a wall, like you're a legend, or you deserve everything in the world. That's not the case, man. I love history. I love learning. I love exercising the brain and expanding my horizons. I don't just stay stupid, stuck on the same thing all the time. So trust me, I do a lot of research. And the best part of all is, this piece right here, I bought from a guy who's been collecting relics for over 85 years. This guy has been collecting stuff from the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, the 70s. And before him, there was a guy, Dr. King. Dr. James King, if you look him up on YouTube, he had an Indian museum in Summers, Connecticut. They had some of the most relics more than any museum could ever have. I bought a bunch of stuff from this guy. I'm going to show you more about that. But I just wanted to basically say, hello, thanks for stopping in, tuning in, episode 10, Breaking Night with BL. As always, shout out Mikey Pens. Shout out to homie Swiss Precise, Knights of Bed, Lamb, and Horror. If you haven't seen their custom clothes or what they're doing, your phone's probably out of service. I know your phone was out of service the other day. I get it. You know what they're doing? Running some tests. They're playing with you. Look at how everybody melted down. My phone's not working. I can't get... I gotta get on Instagram. What's the problem? Oh, my God, man. I'll take my phone and throw that shit in the river. Could care less, man. I want to go back to the old days when no one can get a hold of me. No one even knows where I am. That's what I want to do. But I do want to say love and blessings. Shout out to my boy RB, a.k.a. Bobby. Man, one of the most unbelievable people I ever met. Shout out to Vinny, 3YB. Shout out to Ichabod. Shout out to Smith, Lady Pink. Everybody in the camp. Shout out to all my people from Ridgewood. Shout out to my boy Rosk, my boy M.A. Man, it's just so many people, man, that show love and respect. As always, Coop, CA7 crew. Look at this, you kidding me? Old school. People are around, man. They're coming out of the woodworks. So trust me, there's more to talk about and more to do. Breaking Night with BL, episode 10. I got all my stuff out, man. Super Treat, Tracy 168 canvas she made me for my birthday. Collectible cans. Here, right here. This is the Ghost Yard painting from my boy Pilot. Pilot, Vic Crew. Got real barbed wire on the top. Hey, PWTPA, thanks for my shots. <clears throat> Love this guy. Stuff we made. Got the Vinny 3YB train. Got the canvas from JA. Got, look at this, old Flowmaster markers. Oh, here we go. I got uh, I got two etch markers that J.A. made when we were painting etch. You hear that? Now that's some real shit right there. More Rustos cans, the Met Hats. I got a cold heat canvas made for me by Zim. Rest in peace, Zim. Man. And way over there in the corner in the orange up there, I got a nice little canvas made for me from EA. EA Risk Crew. Mike, rest in peace, brother, man. You are truly missed. I hope you and DG and Zim and everybody's up there having a great time. I know you're out there painting with Asp. You got VE probably running around with you. Doro and BR are over there going crazy. I almost wish I could see that. If I really visioned what it would be like to see that. Just like a fly on the wall watching all these guys right now. What they're talking about. What they're saying. What they're doing. Deeply missed, man. Peace, y'all. See y'all next week. You're going to be hearing a lot of me. Next week, we're talking more about DG. I'm going to show you some of my boxes of canvases and stickers. Here, boxes of stickers. Boxes of stickers. Boxes of stickers. Black books. Tons of black books. More black books. 
more black books. I have another professionalism. Shout these people out. More black books. It's not going to end, people. You all take care of yourself. Enjoy your week. Love you all. Respect you all. Break a night with BL. Peace.